Fasten your seatbelts, travelers. We're departing on a whirlwind journey around Seattle to determine if the top tourist attractions in the city are worth your time and money. I'm Michael, and in this episode of Traveling Tips, we're rating some of the must-see and must-skip tourist attractions in the Emerald City. Whether you agree or disagree with these ratings, my goal is to help you make the most of your short time visiting this great American city. When you hear Seattle, you probably think of rain and coffee. In this video, I wanna show you more of what this city has to offer and give you an idea of what to expect when you visit. Are these attractions worth your time and money? Stay tuned to the end to find out. I've devised a rating scale to help you decide if these Seattle tourist attractions are worth a visit. We'll rank on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the best, the price, location, uniqueness, fun, time commitment, and overall value as seen through the eyes of a non-Seattle resident. Let me know in the comments what you think of these ratings. Okay, enough talking. We're starting our tour with the attraction that scored the lowest on my coveted rating scale, the Museum of Pop Culture. Okay, MPOP fans, before you get mad at this ranking, hear me out. Here's the breakdown of my ratings. For the Museum of Pop Culture, I gave Price a six, Location, an eight. Uniqueness, a six. Fun, a four. Time, a four. And overall value, a four, for a combined rating of 32. The museum building is quite impressive, and it is conveniently located in the Seattle Center, near the Space Needle and Monorail Station. In fact, the monorail passes right through the museum. However, inside, a lot of the space is wasted. Exhibits start on one floor, then go up a floor and down a floor with no way to exit onto that other floor. I expected there to be more about pop culture icons in the US or from around the world. Instead, there was an exhibit about the genre of horror and sci-fi movies and an $8 add-on Disney experience. I saw everything in the museum in about 50 minutes and can say I was quite unimpressed. And it was $34.75 to get in during the summer. I don't think this is worth the time or the money. If you're a Starbucks fan, I'm sure you're gonna to wanna to make a pilgrimage to the original Starbucks, which is located on Pike Place Market. Here's the breakdown of my ratings. For price, I give this an eight. For location, I give it a nine. For uniqueness, I give it a seven. For fun, I give it a six. For time, I give it a two. And for overall value, I gave it a three for a combined score of 35. In order to go inside, you'll need to be okay with waiting in line for upwards of an hour to enter a very small space. The employees were super friendly and it is cool to say that I had a Pike Place roast on Pike Place from the original Starbucks. But there are so many other things that you could use your precious time for instead of waiting in line for the same coffee that you could get at a regular Starbucks down the street. There's special merch that I believe you can only get at this location, like this cute bear. But if you're not into collecting specialty merch, then this won't even be a pro for you. I think that it's good enough to walk by and keep moving to another top attraction. Okay, so this next one may make some art lovers upset with me too. The Chihuly Museum is also located in the Seattle Center near the Space Needle. Here's the breakdown of my rankings for the Chihuly Museum. For price, I give it a five. For location, I give it an eight. For uniqueness, I give it an eight. For fun, I give it a seven. For time, I give it a three. And for overall value, I give it a five. The museum holds a collection of beautiful colored glass by the Seattle area artist, Dale Chihuly. I've seen his art displayed at places like the Bellagio Casino in Las Vegas and the Botanical Gardens in Atlanta prior to coming to Seattle. My main issue with this museum is the price. It costs $35 per adult to enter after 11 a.m. Walking at a slow pace, I honestly saw all of the indoor galleries and outside garden in about 40 minutes, including appropriate time to appreciate the work and watch a demonstration of how the glass shapes are produced. 
I was really looking forward to this one and came away feeling let down. I think the price for the amount of art on display is outrageous and would suggest you visit and observe Chihuly's work in other locations around the world. Continuing with the topic of Starbucks, Seattle is also home to the first Starbucks reserve location. What makes a Starbucks a reserve location? Well, it is super fancy and has more food and drink options, including alcoholic beverages. Here's the breakdown of my ratings for the Starbucks reserve. For price, I give it a 6. For location, I give it a 7. For uniqueness, I score it an 8. For fun, I give it a 7. For time, I give it a 5. And for overall value, I give it a 6. For a total score of 39. Depending on the time of day you go, you'll again have to wait in a long line outside for up to an hour, and then come inside to wait in another line to order and then wait around like a hawk hunting for a place to sit. You'll need a place to sit because you're not gonna do all that waiting just to take the food and drink to go. It is a little out of the way if your plans don't include going to the Capitol Hill neighborhood. While there are some unique food and drink choices, I think this is a bit overrated and that your time is better used to explore the outdoors and some of my picks still to come. While Seattle isn't where Boeing is headquartered, it is where many of the aircraft are built. With a reputation as an aviation powerhouse, you'll have to pay a visit to the Museum of Flight while in Seattle. For the Museum of Flight, I give price a six, location a two, uniqueness a nine, fun an eight, time a seven, and value a seven for an overall score of 39. The museum is located quite a ways south of downtown next to Boeing Field at King County International Airport. It is really inconvenient to get to if you do not have a car. I took an Uber and it cost about $40 each way for the 20 minute ride from downtown during the middle of the day. My favorite part of this museum is the pavilion that houses the large jet aircraft like the Concorde, Boeing 747, Boeing 787 Dreamliner, Air Force One, and others. There are not many other places in the world where you can walk through historic aircraft like this. The museum also has several pieces of space history from the Apollo rockets and the space shuttle training module. Do I think you should visit? Absolutely. One of the most recognizable symbols of Seattle is the Space Needle. Built for the 1962 World's Fair, this observation tower is 605 feet tall, and you can see it from all around Seattle. Here's what I think about the Space Needle. For price, I give it a 6. For location, I give it an 8. For uniqueness, I give it a 9. For fun, I give it a 6. For time, I give it a 6. And for overall value, I give it a 7 for a combined score of 42. If you have a fear of heights, I'd suggest not going up to the top. I also have an unpopular opinion about this attraction. Sure, when you get to the top, you can see Mount Rainier on a clear day and you can see across downtown Seattle and the surrounding area. But the Space Needle is what makes the skyline of Seattle so unique. So without the Space Needle in your shot, it's just seemingly random buildings in your pictures. I think the Space Needle is best enjoyed from the ground, or from other observation areas around the city like the Columbia Tower. If you do go, just before sunset is the best time, as you can watch the transition from daylight to the night lights of the city. You'll have a time ticket to arrive and join a long line to cram into a small elevator. It also costs $35 per adult, which is comparable in price to the World Trade Center One World Observatory and the Empire State Building Observation Decks in New York City. The rotating lounge at the top is a plus, again, if the heights are not a problem for you. The monorail was built for the 1962 World's Fair to help transport fairgoers from downtown to the fairgrounds at the present day Seattle Center. For the monorail, I give the price a 7, location a 9, 
uniqueness an eight, fun an eight, time a five, overall value a six, with a total score of 43. The attraction here is to ride a somewhat unique form of transportation and to save the mile and a half walking each way. A ticket costs $3 per adult, which isn't horrible considering that a ride share for the same distance will cost much more than that. I think the price, uniqueness, and convenience of the monorail makes it worth a ride. For more urban outdoor fun, you can head to the Olympic Sculpture Garden and the waterfront area. For the Olympic Sculpture Park and Waterfront, I give price an 8, location an 8, uniqueness a 7, fun a 7, time a 7, overall value a 7, for a total score of 44. The Olympic Sculpture Park is an outdoor extension of the Seattle Art Museum. This 9-acre sculpture garden is a great park to relax near the water and take in the skyline of downtown. The park gives out these bags with fun activities for kids to help explore and interact with the garden. And best of all, it's free. Nearby is a running and biking trail that stretches along the shore, providing dramatic views of the water and the distant Olympic Mountains. South from the Sculpture Park, closer to downtown, is the cruise terminal and the piers of the downtown waterfront, which are home to the Seattle Aquarium and the Seattle Great Wheel. This is Tourist Central with lots of souvenir shops and street performers. If you're planning to spend time by the waterfront, I would definitely pick the sculpture park over the downtown waterfront area. Okay, so I usually hate the idea of guided tours, but being in a city by the water, I knew I needed to get on a boat to see the skyline. For the Argosy Harbor cruise, I give price a six, location a nine, uniqueness an eight, fun a nine, time an eight, and value a seven for an overall score of 47. The tour was perfect at one hour and had great narration. The guide shared some interesting stories about different buildings on the waterfront and shared experiences of seeing orca whales in the Puget Sound and Elliott Bay. I went later in the day to get the golden hour light just before sunset which really illuminated the skyline. At $33 per adult, it's comparable in price to other cruise tours that I've taken in other cities like New York and Paris. If you want a similar view for a lower cost, check out one of my recommendations that's still coming up in this list. Next is another free outdoor activity. Ready for a park with a view? Make your way to the north end of Lake Union to visit Gasworks Park. For Gasworks Park, I give it a price of 10, location is a seven, uniqueness an eight, fun an eight, time a seven, value an eight, with an overall score of 48. Gasworks Park is built on the site of a former coal gasification plant at the north end of Lake Union. From the park, there is a great view of the lake and the downtown skyline. You can picnic here or just sit back and enjoy the nice weather. Nearby is the Fremont Troll statue. Since 1989, this 18-foot tall statue has sat under the north end of the Aurora Bridge. This statue is also featured in the movie 10 Things I Hate About You. The Fremont neighborhood was quite cute, with many shops, restaurants, and breweries close to the water. Remember that other option for a water view with the skyline for cheaper? If you have a bit longer than an hour to spare, check out the ferry to Bainbridge Island. For the Washington State Ferry to Bainbridge Island, I give the price a 9, 
Location in eight. Uniqueness in eight. Fun in eight. Time a seven. Overall value in eight. For a total score of 48. The state of Washington has an impressive ferry system that helps cut down on travel times around the Puget Sound, connecting the various islands to the mainland and downtown Seattle. The Washington State Ferry to Bainbridge Island opens the door for visitors to get out on the water and explore the great outdoors of Washington State. It costs $9.25 per person to ride the ferry and fares are only charged on the trip to Bainbridge Island. It's a great deal, in my opinion, to get a feel for the woodsy suburbs and to see the skyline from the water during the day and the night. You can also check out the water taxi that leaves from downtown Seattle and heads to West Seattle for a shorter ride. When you think of Seattle, you probably envision this particular view. You've seen this view on TV shows and in movies, so for the ultimate view of the Seattle skyline, you need to head up to Queen Anne's Hill to Cary Park. Here's my breakdown for Cary Park. I give it price a 10, location a seven, uniqueness a nine, fun an eight, time a seven, value an eight, and an overall score of 49. This park is often referred to as Postcard Park because of the view of the Space Needle and the rest of downtown. On clear days, you can even see Mount Rainier in the distance. It's quite a hike to get up the hill, so you may want to take a ride up if steep hills are a challenge. You can walk around the neighborhood too and see Meredith Gray's house from the show Gray's Anatomy. And the moment we've all been waiting for. My pick for the top must-do attraction in Seattle is Pike Place Market. Here's the breakdown of Pike Place Market. I give the price a 9, location a 10, uniqueness a 10, fun a 10, time a 10, value a 10, with an overall score of 59. I love it here. Flying fish, amazing food, and family-friendly atmosphere make this a home run. There are so many different quality food vendors in and around the market that you could probably eat most of your meals on your vacation here while trying something new for each meal. I have a whole video on exploring Pike Place Market, which you should check out after this one. From the flower vendors of the main market hall to the small businesses surrounding the market, you'll certainly find something of interest here. If you have spare time during your trip, consider experiencing the Underground City Tour, catching a Mariners game at T-Mobile Park or a Seattle Seahawks game at Lumen Field, taking a hike at Discovery Park, or exploring the Museum of History and Industry. And there you have it. I hope these ratings helped you gain a better understanding of Seattle's top tourist attractions. Make sure to share your own experiences down in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.